so far we talked about what settings mean when you're calibrating and the ambient lighting, the calibrator, the calibration process, we talked about the monitor and all that. But what we haven't said is, okay, what well I'm sure you asked this yourself, what settings should I use for my calibration process? This video is all about that. So let's take a look. On the left hand side I have the three points, the three settings we talked about, right? The white point, which is the color of white, the gamma, which is essentially tonal response curve, we talked about that, and the luminance, we talked about that as well, which is the brightness of white. Well, on we I, I divided it into three categories depending on your needs. So we have one that's general purpose, we have one that's inject printing, and we have one that's prepress. A general purpose would be something that you know, you're not too serious about printing your own work or super accurate about it and you just need to calibrate your monitor to match the web or if you're posting everything on web and you just need to kinda find the common calibration settings that, that give you the best compromise. The inject printing, that's when you're trying to match the print and what you see on screen and you're doing your own printing at home. And that's something that, you know, you will have to massage the settings and I can't give you exact settings because you have to match for yourself. We talked about that before, I will talk about it now as well. And pre-press is a classical situation when you're retouch or you're preparing for, for it to be printed on a magazine, for example, right? So let's take a look. General purpose situation, right? Well, white point, this is my recommendation, should be, and it's recommendation in many calibration devices. It's to be set to 6500K, uh, 6, or if you have an option to set it to D65, that's even better. And this is also considered to be a web standard because the sRGB uh, profile for images is also D65. Uh, as far as the tone response curve, I believe you should go with the native one if it's very close to 2.2. If it's not, calibrate to 2.2. We talked about that in one of the videos. As far as the luminance go, well, I would go anywhere from 110 to 150 candelas per meter square. And remember, this is for working situations, so it should be brighter than the ambient lighting. We're not printing here, per se. So, as far as 150, you know, the upper uh, luminance goes, well, many monitors are actually so, mm, you know, many monitors are they're designed to be multimedia devices and as such sometimes they cannot go lower than maybe 130 140 candelas per meter square so 150 also might be a good po good thing to do and if you're not concerned with printing just for web this could also be great because you get really bright screen and on the lower scale 110 i think that's pretty good because at that scale you can you know, if, if you're preparing that you potentially might print it or you might send it to a, a local lab to be printed or something, if you're doing weddings maybe, you know, that's, that's also a good <clears throat> good starting point. If you can calibrate your screen to that setting. Like I said, some monitors are so bright actually that they cannot go lower than maybe say 120 candelas per meter square. Now as far as inkjet printing, I would start with C D65 and that's a good starting point because at this point remember you're trying to match your print and your screen so this is, this is a good starting point and then you would lower it until you find whatever matches visually to your print as far as the native uh, gamma or gamma 2.2 that's just the same advice as I'd give for general purpose now go with native if it's 2.2 go with gamma 2.2 otherwise I think that will work just fine for you. Uh, as far as uh, luminance, well, I would go you now 110 to 120, so lower it, and then massage it until you match as as much as you can until you match your um, print. If you can't do that, then adjust the luminance in your viewing boot, or move the light away or more closer to your print, and try to massage what you see on screen, your settings, as well as what you can print, you know, how you can light your print. And when you get a good match, visual match, that's the settings you want to use. So these are just starting points. And for pre-press, well, the ISO or International Standard says that we should calibrate to 5000K. 
so let's use that if you're doing for pre-press and you're doing a, and this is also if you're doing a lot of pre-press right if you're doing you know almost every every job that you do if you occasionally do it or you're not that concerned then you can also use 65 or d65 and you know might not be perfect but it's not going to be that big of a deal so i would go with the standard as a recommendation here because they have recommended that so set it to 5000k or d50 if you have that option as far as uh, the the gamma goes well i would go like i said before native or 2.2 that's your best bet but if you're working with the ecr uh with the profile um you know ec eci i believe that's how you pronounce it basically it's a it's a profile that has its own tone response curve that's l star so if if you're working with that and preparing for print then calibrating your monitor to that setting as well makes more sense to me so if you're doing that and using that profile for sending it to being to be printed in a prepress environment and then calibrating your screen to l star is a good point as well and we'll talk about that more later when we get to actual profiles and as far as the um the luminance goes and this is something that's recommended by the ISO standards as well uh, it should also be brighter than the ambient because we're not printing at that particular environment where we're working so it's a working environment and you should go somewhere from you know 80 to 110 depending on how low can you go with your monitor but we're also gonna soft proof our images so a lot of these settings are going to be adjusted based on the soft proofing options and since we didn't talk about it just yet I'm gonna recommend this and then when we get to soft proofing we're gonna revisit this a little bit as well so basically these will be the settings I would recommend in your cases now if you're a general purpose inkjet or prepress you would choose those settings and uh, if you have other schools of thought I'm sure there are many people who disagree on this or agree on this I mean if you read forums there are practically 10 different people have 10 different ideas about what's the best option well these are my recommendations based on my experience my research so you can either listen to this or you can research on your own and try to figure out what works best for you uh, I thought that, you know giving you these options will be a great thing for you because you don't have to do the research I have done after all you're paying for me to, to tell you about the research right that's why you bought this and also all of these settings are something that even if you do change them a little bit it's not going to affect humongously what's going to happen with your prints because we are going to be doing soft proofing and there are other ways to make sure that you get better print to screen match as well so we'll talk about that later.